There's one fact about scalar path integrals that is really crucial. We are going to see this same idea repeated over and over in this volume, and this is so important. Are you ready? Here it is. Path integrals are independent of the parametrization of the path. Now what? Why? Well, let's think about it. If I've got a vacuum cleaner and I'm, I'm going along a path and, and I'm sucking up dirt, then does it matter how quickly I walk along that path? No, of course not. If I'm looking at the net amount of dirt that I've picked up, it's only the path that matters and not the speed along which I walk. Okay, but that's not really a proof. What is a proof is the change of variables theorem. Go back, review that theorem, try to see if you can prove that this parametrization does not matter using the change of variables theorem. That's a great exercise. Okay, so parametrizations don't matter. That's good. What does matter is the path itself. The shape of the path definitely matters. Be careful and think when you're computing scalar path integrals. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have the function f given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and we want to integrate this function along a path from the point 0, 0, negative 2 to 0, 0, positive 2. Let's see how the path matters. First, let's keep it simple. Do a straight line path. That can be parametrized as gamma of t equals 0, 0, and t for the z-coordinate as t goes from negative 2 to positive 2. Now, this path is clearly a unit speed path, so the path integral is going to be very simple. To integrate x squared plus y squared plus z squared, we substitute in gamma of t for the x, y, and z coordinates, and then dl becomes the length of gamma prime of t dt. Now, all of this is going to be really simple. Why? x is 0, y is 0, z is t, and gamma prime of t is of unit length. So we simply have to integrate t squared dt as t goes from negative 2 to positive 2, yielding a final answer of 16 thirds. That's not so bad. Okay, well, let's change things up a little bit. Instead of that straight line path, let's do a different path, a curved path. Let's say that we have a new path, gamma tilde of t, that is given as follows. The x-coordinate is 2 sine t, the y-coordinate is 0, the z-coordinate is negative 2 cosine t. Here t is going to range from 0 to pi. Now this is no longer a unit speed path, but it does have constant speed. You can check that the length of gamma tilde prime of t is 2, a constant. Therefore, to integrate x squared plus y squared plus z squared over this path, what do we do? We substitute in 2 sine t for x, 0 for y, negative 2 cosine t for z, and that gives us something really simple. After we use a sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, we get 4 for the integrand, and then dl becomes 2 times dt. So integrating 8 dt as t goes from 0 to pi gives us our final answer of 8 pi. And notice that this is different than what we got with a straight line path. It winds up being more both because the integrand is larger along that circular path and the path has more length to it. It's a longer path. Be careful when you're doing scalar path integrals to pay attention to the path.